Hello and welcome back to another Casual 60 deck card design. Um, I'm recording this right after my Herb Rask and Bassandra deck. While I'm on theme of my kind of really pathetic weak decks, I'm going to go ahead and show this one. Uh, this is a deck I designed that is essentially, its sole purpose is to help train and teach new players how to play Magic. Um, it is, I, I don't like water, white border cards, and I rarely play white. I don't like white and green too much. It's not that they're bad colors, it's just I don't like the play style they usually invoke. Um, but for teaching people how to play, um, I wanted some kind of thematic deck. I'm a big fan of 7th edition. I know there's a lot of mixed feelings about the artwork, but some of it's fantastic. My favorite card is Fallen Angel, and the 7th edition Fallen Angel is beautiful. Um, but for this deck, I decided to make something very easy to learn, something that kind of spilled out the, the, the actual rules of what the cards do in the, in the text, and something that actually gave an opponent, or, or the, the player, the new player, a chance to understand the steps of, of, of every turn. So what we ended up here is a 7th edition only, like every card in here has to be 7th edition, a white border themed archer deck. Uh, so let's start. There's very like the, uh, of course I'm I'm trying to emphasize while teaching people that it's best to run play sets of cards that are good, and why the smaller play sets of the cheaper cards compared to fewer cards are more expensive to help curve for mana. There's just a lot in this deck that's designed specifically to help teach someone how to play. It's obviously not a really strong deck, although against some decks it works out great. Uh, sometimes it's really situational, um, but yeah, let's get to it. Uh, this is an archer themed deck, so there's lots of archers here. Uh, Longbow Archer is 2 for a 2 2 first strike. He has a reach. Uh, this is what reach was before it spelled out for us. Uh, so we have a playset of them in here. Um, what the deck really is, is it's, it's the pingered archers. So these come in three flavors. This is also, I'll get to it, but this is the, the, the basic one. One and a white for a 1 1, and he can tap to do one damage to target attacking or blocking creature. Um, why this is important and helpful to teach people is because that, that is essentially forcing them to understand that there's a time before combat damage. Uh, that before something is actually dealt damage, you can respond to it. And that's, from experience, that's just something that just blows a lot of people's minds. Um, but the crossbow infantry, he is a basic, I mean he is a common, and he is two mana for one one that does one damage. Um, the cool thing is that how this is ramping up, there is a basically a double of him. Heavy Ballista is four mana for a two three that taps to do two damage. He is an uncommon, so we're gone from common to uncommon. And just like Heavy Ballista creeps up, there is one that is three of the small guys. He is six mana for a three three that taps to three, and he is a rare. Again, that's really good for helping kind of illustrate. Although, as you saw, I went from four to three to one of these guys to help illustrate the rarity versus mana cost and power. Um, finishing off the creatures, we have Intrepid Hero. Um, three for a one, one that taps to destroy something with power greater than four. This is actually a pretty clever combo in the deck for another creature we're going to get to. Uh, Sunweb is a good defensive blocker, although it lets the little dudes through. Although, ideally, I have the pingers to kill the little dudes. Sarah's Advocate is the one that's pretty clever with the, uh, the, uh, well, where'd you go? The Intrepid Hero. Uh, she is a 4 4 2 2 flying, and target creature that is attacking or blocking gets plus 2 plus 2. So, if they choose to attack me with a creature I can't kill with Intrepid Hero, I can boost it, as long as his power isn't 1. Uh, but of course, that's really good for my own creatures. Um, so we have three, now four of her in here, but we also have another angel called Sustainer of Realms. Four for a 2-3 who gets a bigger butt when she blocks. And then the big creature of the deck is Sarah Angel, the really awkward artwork with the Madonna boobies. Um, five or yeah, five four 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 Vigilant. She is a classic card. She is her abilities are kind of spelled out very blankly on there. She's flying, and the Vigilance is really nicely worded. So there's no there's no mistake of what she does. Um, but going on to the rest of the deck. Um, the, mostly this is all creature. This entire deck is obviously combat shenanigans. Um, the only real spell we have to stop a more powerful creature we can't deal with is pacifism. And then we have Sarah's Embrace to give a creature plus two, plus two in flying and vigilance. Uh, again, an enchantment on a creature, an aura. This is another really good thing to kind of educate someone from what an aura is compared to what 
an enchantment is. They're both enchantments, but an ore is for creatures, and this is just something that chills out. Uh, worship is also really good to educate people about burn decks. Uh, then the other one, I only chose to put one main deck, is a Meek Stone. This actually combos really well with a lot of the deck. All of my creatures have power two or less, except for Sarah Angel, who already has Vigilance. Um, so that means I can make it so that I have I can I can manipulate the board presence more, and also most of my creatures I don't really want to attack with unless I get a bigger creature out. So Caltrops also tends to do some pinging damage, really helps us remove any blockers. Although this does kind of shut down some of my early guys, I would prefer to keep them back for pinging. And then finally we just have a giant pile of lands, um, and that's the actual entire deck. I do have some extra cards. Um, this is more like a collection than a sideboard. I didn't really want to educate sideboard. These are just some extra cards that I had for it. Um, reverse damage was in there for a while to teach about uh, basically reversing a life gain, although that's not something you always want to advocate to a newer player. Breath of Life is another, uh, it's, it's like a recursion. And Pariah is, it, it ended up being really complicated, so I took Pariah out. I didn't like trying to explain that to people. Um, and then there's some more enchantments, like giving everyone first strike, but my deck doesn't really need it. And giving my creatures bigger toughness, which the deck doesn't really need. And then there's uh, some more Meek Stones and Caltrops in here. Um, but that is the Archer deck. Uh, again, this is really good at helping people pick up the game. Um, what I usually do is I will try to set someone down and have them play the, the tutorial on Duels of the Planeswalkers 2012 or 13. Uh, 14 is okay, 15 is rubbish, in my opinion, unless they do some changes. I, I'm just a big fan of a lot of the previous stuff, and 15 has impressed me. But after the tutorial, which is great because there's no one barking rules off at people, then sitting them down and, and helping them play this against someone else's casual deck, or even against yours, it really helps kind of illustrate the different steps of the game, especially during combat, because that's something that, it, from from my own history, it's just hard for people to pick up. Um, this is, it, it's obviously a very highly casual deck. It's, it has not aged very well. There's very little power creep in here, um, especially when you, you consider Sarah Angel being the strongest creature of the deck. <laughs> Um, but yeah, this is just something I put together. It's pretty fun to play in casual anyways, even if I'm not teaching anyone. Against other groups, like um, those who don't have a larger budget, it's also fun to play against because it, it may even stand its own. Um, but yeah, if, if you have any ideas or if you enjoy something like this, like if you ever had any ideas for a trainer deck, something to help teach players how to play in your play group, go ahead and share. Like That's actually something that I've always been interested in. I like helping people I've always been pretty big at basically giving away all my extra stuff and helping people learn how to be better at magic. Although, finding an invasive way to not sound bossy, that's the tricky part. <laughs> you gotta have fun there, mate.